Hello, and welcome to a special Christmas edition of the Ron Paul Liberty Report. My name is Kelly Paul. I am Ron's daughter-in-law. I've been married to Senator Rand Paul for 31 years. And today, I have the extreme pleasure and privilege of interviewing my amazing mother-in-law, Mrs. Carol Paul. Carol, it's just such fun to be able to do this today. I know everybody out there loves you and is always asking about you. They want to see more of Lovey, as you are known to our family. Uh, you are someone I admire so much. You're not only an amazing support to Ron, but you are a true matriarch. You're the true heart and soul of our family. Last night was the perfect example as we had our pre-Christmas gathering of how many people did we have last night? Well, last night uh, we all circled the whole kitchen and dining area and uh, after uh, the prayer uh, they decided to count off to see how many there really were there for dinner and we had 52. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yes, just my kids. <laughs> yeah, just kid now, just kids and grandkids. Because that's true. You know, my husband, Rand, you know, Rand is one of five. You have five kids. How many grandkids? Nineteen grandkids and eleven great grandkids, including the newest. Oh yes, uh, Finley is um, six or, yeah, or seven uh, months. Yeah, six or seven months. There. The thing I love about the Paul family is. When you have a family this big, there's almost always a new baby, or at least a toddler, <laughs> which makes Christmas and the holidays so special. It really does. And so much fun. Yes. It really is. What are some of your favorite traditions that we do at Paul Family Christmas? Oh, goodness, we have so many, and they go back so far. Give me a, give me I a know, hand. Well, for me, I, I, I love the singing. We have oh, yes. Okay. Singing is really great. Uh, our oldest grandson uh, plays the guitar, and uh, our uh, granddaughter, who has four little stair steps from uh, 12 down to 5 and uh, more, we have kids that have come in from... Uh, Let's see, where, who came the farthest? I hadn't thought well, about that. Well, so we all fly in, like of the 19 grandkids, and we took this, that amazing picture last night. We did. Because they were all there, the 19. So uh, I have, we have three sons in our family, one in Washington, D.C., one in Cincinnati, and one in Norfolk, Virginia. They all flew in. Okay. And we had quite a few from here. And Valerie's uh, from there. Valerie's our Kentucky. fellow Kentuckian, like yeah. us. Of course, yeah. Rand and I flew in from Bowling Green, for, well, Nashville, our closest airport, with our son yeah. Duncan. Mm -hmm. And his girlfriend lives in Bowling Green, so we all flew together. I thought that was nice. But, it we was. had different people picking up different people at every, seemed like every other air stop in the <laughs> yep. all day long. But we we're really, really, really fortunate. It's the first time that we were able to get a picture of all 19 grandkids all there at the same time. Somebody always has something going on that they have to be somewhere or other. But the 19, it was uh, exciting to have them. We didn't try the 11 little ones because they don't always sit for a picture but yeah but yeah. they did no i think we did actually get oh, did one you? yeah we did oh. we did get a great grands too so oh, that's great but yeah you're right um matt has always been the leader on the guitar uh, but then now of course we have laura's husband kent plays guitar our sons play guitar so someone's always picking up a guitar and then matt's son was on the piano too well all of them play the piano but they're all you know some very beginners but uh, no, we're really proud of all of them. That yeah. we have some, we have some great athletes coming up, and uh, that's exciting. We have, we always have a sporting event to attend if we can. Yeah. Well, when <laughs> so. people ask me to describe Paul family Christmas, this is the way I describe it. I say the great thing about a huge family when you have a, this big gathering is that there's all kinds of things going on. If you want to go out and play basketball, there's probably somebody outside playing basketball. If you want to do a puzzle. You know, Lovey's got the great puzzle table. <laughs> yeah, I do have that set into the garage this year. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we had a we have an overflow room for the puzzlers this year. There's always <laughs> yeah. somebody sitting by the fire singing a Christmas carol or Yeah, they got warmed up last night starting with uh 
little practice sessions, mm -hmm. but uh, the girls did good. And the Vicky's boys. kids are amazing singers. Yes, they are. They uh, and uh, Caroline, being an only one coming from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky. But she likes to sing with them, and she's good too. She so. has a beautiful voice. Yes, she does have, and uh, and they like to sing, and they don't mind. Uh, being pressured, you know, into saying, "How about yeah. your kids singing?" No, I love that and about. And they're all up. They will stand up there and they will <laughs> perform. I mean, I think my favorite songs that they do are "Happy Birthday Jesus" in sign and signing language. It, yes. That is so beautiful when they all sing that. Um, we, you know, we do have a family member that's deaf, so it's just really moving when they do that song. And then my other favorite is when they do Seek Ye First, The uh, Kingdom of God. They're good, yes, they're good. Well, uh, it was exciting uh, as we all held hands uh, around our centerpiece and uh, when a, I can't remember who started the grace, it's always whoever isn't ready, we call on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, at the end of it, they were saying, Everybody's here, and they said, "Okay, let's let's count off." I know. And then we counted off, and I think we got to fifty-one yeah. or fifty-two. 52 I think yeah. with the new baby, so yeah. it was really it yeah. was a special night, and we it have was. three more nights of it. So I'm so excited if I make it to be part of <laughs> to part of it all. I know I certainly I love all of our traditions and the food. Now you you are. You know, you're the, the architect of all of these joyful traditions. The right? amazing food, yeah. it's always delicious. The decorations, the sense of just yeah. family and togetherness. Um, well, I couldn't do it all without a lot of help. So that uh, is really a good thing. Well, uh, you are an amazing cook, and we have a lot of other great cooks in the family, but you started with the traditional Paul family recipes, you did these amazing cookbooks back in like the 1976, Well, that was right? our secret a weapon when Ron was running for office. And he said, a cookbook? <laughs> but it has been well received, people. And people have sent recipes from all over the country. Yeah, yeah you we started have, this. And basically, people wanted more. to be on the Ron Paul mailing list so they would get the annual cookbook. Yeah. And you did, what, 12 different years of these cookbooks? Yes. With, yes. Starting, I guess, basically with the, the, the fa family yeah, favorite that, recipes. That one, yeah. I think that's the first yeah. one. Yeah, first cookbook. But it has So you have your snickerdoodles in here? The what? The, your snickerdoodle cookies? They are in there. They yeah. are. But we have my mother and Ron's mother both have recipes in there. The only thing I found out is that back uh, in their day when these recipes were put in, they used a higher temperature on the ovens because our ovens are so much hotter now. You have to drop down maybe to three... 50 instead of 375 even you know okay but uh, uh, that was the only thing I've noticed that needs maybe corrected I keep saying I'm gonna put them all together one of these days and uh, do a finale book but I haven't done it yet I just keep telling myself what, I'm going what to. have you been doing <laughs> with your time oh my goodness uh, <laughs> I know I know I tell you, you would stay busy in our family just going to the sporting events that all the kids are in. And we are very lucky to have some very, very good and upcoming athletes, and we've had very good athletes. In fact, you wanted to know how I first met Ron. I did, yep. So, <laughs> so let's go into that yeah. a little bit. Let's okay. tell a little history well, here. The, uh, uh, I guess I was in the eighth grade, and I had a friend who was a big senior in high school, and she was going to take me to a track meet. I'd never been to a track meet. So we went and uh, just about the time that we got there, they were uh, running the 330, 340. Am I right? I can't remember. Anyway, it was a relay. or was the Relay race. Relay, yeah, yes. Yeah. It was a relay race. And uh, uh, our team was losing and they were way behind. And Ron took the baton. He ran the whole, uh, he caught up with everybody anyway they won it and I was very impressed of course <laughs> yes oh my gosh that's pretty dramatic yes yes it was especially for our first track meet but Ron was a state champion uh, track and he was good in the 330 and the 440, 440 and the 100 and uh, I knew he did them all the quick races wow. not the not the mile and things like that but uh, 
He was good. Yeah, great <laughs> athlete, super smart, and pretty good looking. Oh, yes, <laughs> I would say so. I would say so. And so you saw him run the track meet, and then tell me a little bit about oh, how you okay. went on well, your first day. I really probably didn't see him for the next, you know, couple years, really. But uh, uh, seeing that I have a very unusual and special birthday in that it's on February 29th and you know that only comes once every four years so my dad from the time I was a kid saying oh on her 16th birthday we're gonna hire a hall we're gonna do all this we're gonna you know he just would build it up and he'd go to the desserts we're gonna have and all this kind of stuff and he said oh we're gonna have hollowed out candy bars with chocolate ice cream and vanilla on either end <laughs> he just he just built it up and then finally it came true it had to happen so all the girls were invited and they invited a date and I invited Ron and he was not really a, he was a sportsman he wasn't really a dating person but his brother said oh come on you have to go she's invited you and it's her party you know and he well he grumbled a little but he came so that was our first date. it was my 16th birthday so oh, that was uh, uh, special right there and I was going to tell you more about and it, but you, I can't. And you all dated then the rest of high school, I guess? Well, off and on. I mean, we just, uh, off and on. And then he went to college. And, uh, well, I hadn't thought of this, but uh, we had, a, my mother and I had a symbol. I lived about maybe a half a mile from the school. It was, it was over Hill and Dale, but you could see our kitchen window. And if I had a letter from Ron, she would hang the dish towel out the kitchen window, oh. <laughs> and I would know that I had a letter from Ron. That's when the I got first that. time I've ever heard that. <laughs> that is so sweet and yeah. romantic. Wasn't I love that? It. Oh, it was neat. Well, he was not a long letter writer because he was very busy being a good student and honor and all that kind of thing. And he ran track. No, he didn't. He ran a little bit. He had his knee injury, and so working to uh, rehab his knees, he swam on the. Uh, Gettysburg College swim team uh, to oh, help wow. his running. So, I didn't know that uh, either. But uh, it, they were great years and uh, carefree. And and so when did he propose marriage? Well, let's see. Oh, I can't give you a date, but I can tell you where we were. Uh, we were uh, we were in a park that the on a hill that overlooks the swimming pool. It was a 50 meter swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And that was something for those days. They didn't have them then. And we were sitting up on top of the hill and we were you know, commiserating. I was at Ohio University and he was at Gettysburg and all this kind of thing. And so all of a sudden he pops up with his ring and he says, well, you know, we got to finish school. <laughs> so, but he gave me the ring that night and I can't remember if my parents, I guess they knew about it ahead of time. Uh, all that formalities of those things, yeah. but I was excited about being engaged, and uh, we uh, we finally married uh, uh, his last semester of school. It was really fun on the campus because we got to be chaperones for the fraternity parties. <laughs> oh, okay. So you were married while he was still in school uh, just, then? Just, just three months. three months. The last three months of his college. You all were yeah. the old married couple. Yes, we were. <laughs> yes. I had to uh, do my education quick so that I could make the most money to put him through med school. <laughs> I didn't do it alone, of course. We had a lot of family help. But uh, we were uh, very fortunate to be able to do all the things that we had planned. And so right after it. graduation, he went to med school at Duke University, right? Right. And you all moved to Durham. Yes, and at Durham to make enough money and you know pad our currency uh, we we raised collie puppies and so we had one uh, collie puppy that had 12 puppies one year and we were so excited about these puppies and all of course by that time we had two kids they were uh, Ronnie and Lori were uh, like nine and a half months apart and uh, they uh, the people back in Pennsylvania when we were Duke, wanted to meet these kids and see these kids for the first time. So we had to go back. So we had to raise these, we raised these puppies and sold them to make enough money for gas. And Ron knows all the statistics. He'll say he had X number of dollars in his pocket and that had bought gas all the way to Pennsylvania and back to North Carolina. Wow. But uh, 
So that you got to exciting. go home for the holidays and show off those new babies. Yes, yes. my beautiful children. <laughs> Selling that little. Yeah. Then, of course, we added three more to end up having five, which made it, uh, rounded it out. Uh, we, uh, we had a boy and a, a girl, and then three boys in a row after that. So two boys two in a row boys after, that. Yeah. after that. Rand Three, and Ro yeah, Robert. Yeah. And then, and then we the had star a, was the, born. <laughs> icing on the cake. Yeah, we had baby Joy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and baby Joy, of course, is a doctor now, an OB doctor. So she's grown up and has six kids. So she did add to the numbers. And, uh, she did. Joy did more than her part. I always <laughs> say Joy makes me feel like a low achiever in life. She's an OBGYN, yeah. successful, busy practice, and mother of six amazing kids. I so know. They are. They are. I'm proud of all of them. Yeah, I mean, they are great. Uh, 19 grandkids is a, is a great thing. And did I tell you that we counted off? Yes, dinner. we did. Yes, we, we did we, last we, night. Yes, and that, so I yes, think a uh, couple may be leaving today, so our numbers will be a little bit diminished tomorrow, but we'll still probably have in the high 40s for the rest of the weekend, I oh, think. Oh, yes. I think we will because I think we have some extra people. Oh, that, good. That couldn't stand not coming and seeing the crowd. So it's always fun when everybody we'll drops in. We'll have some drop-in people. I'm I know sure. my kids were already up this morning. My, well, my kids, my sons, they're grown now, but they were their favorite thing is always waking up at your house and having the pigs in a blanket. <laughs> that they can always smell those pigs in the blanket cooking, and you're pulling them out of the oven, um, and that, well, and the and the array of Christmas cookies yes, that are I everywhere. Know. Well, I couldn't do, do it all without Flora. I have yeah. this wonderful friend that has worked for me for almost, well, 15 years, maybe more. She she knows better than I do, but uh, we couldn't do it without her. Oh, she's amazing. Yeah, I love her is. so much. She's, she is, she absolutely. Was, she is so amazing. So, But I've been so happy to do all the things that go with along with kids, you know, going to all their events and things like that. And uh, my mother and dad wanted to be part of all that, and they moved to Texas, and their last few years lived with us, but Kelly brought samples. Yes. Uh, so this is how, the other thing that you are amazing at, uh, in, in addition to your many other accomplishments, <laughs> is you're an incredible seamstress and knitter, and I wanna talk a little bit about the, the all of the things that you make for the grandkids, but these are some of the, the stockings that Graham made for, my mother, for the grandkids. My mother knit those. Yeah, yeah, and so my boys loved those, and then by the time I had my third son, Graham was had retired from the. She knitting. had a cataract surgery. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And so you made uh, Robert stocking, yeah. and I, yeah. I have it, but it won't show up on the green screen. But it's twice as long as the other one. So you. <laughs> but always, I knit it. <laughs> you did it. You knitted that one. But I, you know, you know how to spoil these grandkids because my mother would be like, "Why is Robert stocking so much bigger than everybody else's?" <sighs> but the one thing now that you do that I think is so special, and it's amazing that you have made. 19, or well, I guess all of them haven't graduated from high school yet, but every grandchild that graduates from high school, you create these special t-shirt quilts. Uh, tell everybody about those. Well, they, uh, we save their t-shirts from young kids on and special t-shirts, and uh, I make a t-shirt quilt for them. And the one that's coming up hasn't gotten me his shirts yet, and he's in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got it. I remember telling my boys, but then when you made them as their high school graduation gift, they are so special. All my sons ha took them to college and they'd have yeah. them and people would be like, oh, my goodness. You know, we you basically say save all your sports or your band or your fun dances or things that you go to. You have all these commemorative shirts and it's just such a really cool way to keep those. Well, and then Rand wanted one for all his political things. So we did make him uh, one and he had it in Washington for a while. I don't know whether oh, he has it. It's, it's still in Washington. It's very prominently displayed <laughs> in his office. You yeah. did because he was like, wow, when he saw one of our kids, he's like, mom, I, want, I need one of those. <laughs> and so you took uh, a lot of not only his Rand Paul t-shirts and campaign shirts from the first Senate race and the second, but some vintage and really <laughs> cool Ron Paul shirts from like back in the 70s well, and some were kind of thin ran had worn them a lot of times yes and i worried about putting them in the quilt but they're 
have good backing, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, you made such an amazing piece of art out of those shirts. And I have to thank you because Rand never wants to throw anything away. <laughs> and he will like wear a shirt until it's completely got holes in it. So this way he can kind of keep it. He doesn't have to throw it away. He has this great memory of some of these shirts because he loves he loves to keep things long well, long term. All, boys and girls all like the shirts. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's one thing that they think about. And I keep worrying about, you know, that... I'm not as good as I used to be. <laughs> it's pretty amazing how many of those th that you have yeah, made. And you I've also make other beautiful quilts. I mean, well, you're, you are a true artist. Well, the, uh, all my new brides usually got a quilt. So mm -hmm. we'll see if I can keep that up. That's, and it's usually a king or queen size quilt. So that uh, takes a little... Oh, I brag well, about you all the time to people. I'm like, my mother-in-law is in her amazing sewing room making these exquisite quilts. And you, know, you have just to be special to get invited to my sewing room. Yes. It's really a mess. I'm <laughs> sorry, it is a mess. But if I had to put everything away every time, that would take the time away from being able to sew. So yeah. sometimes things are half done on the sewing machine and on the table and on the cutting rack and I get an idea and I think, well, you know, if I had that and I'd drag out something to look at to make sure I can do some more. Yep, that sewing <laughs> room is a true treasure. It's not only got all your works of art in progress, but then it's also the place where you have all of the various Christmas gifts you buy for 19 and all the stocking stuffers. And one year I was in there, remember, I found all this these stuff. I'm like, how come you haven't, who's this for? And you're like, oh, I don't know, I bought it and I haven't given out. We basically created a dirty Santa game out of all of the stuff we found in your sewing room. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of junk. <laughs> but we had good things. We had too. some fun things. Yes. I still have a tablecloth in there that mother embroidered and different things that I have and that are really kind of are new, but they're old, old pieces yeah. of work. But uh, mother was good at, at handwork too. So that was uh, kind of yeah. fun to carry on that tradition. But uh, that room, uh, is a mess, but uh, I came across an item I was shopping last year, and I found uh, a glass case, and it was on sale. Well, it was on sale. I had to get it, and I can put all my quilts. Each baby that's born gets a baby quilt, and they, it's a heart quilt, and since I'm lovey to my grandkids and anybody else that wishes to call me that. <laughs> uh, yeah, even their friends call you lovey. I know they do. I know they do. When they can't you know, they can they can remember better than I can. I keep thinking, oh my goodness, I know I know that <laughs> that kid, but which was she a friend of which kid? You know, and et cetera. But life goes on in the fast lane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, your quilts are amazing. I knew when I when I was dating Rand and we came down here. I remember it was November and you were taking the Paul family Christmas photo and you had made sweatshirts for everybody and every kid had a color with their Christmas tree design on it and you know it was like Lori's family was green and Ronnie's family was a different color and everybody had their thing and then as they got all their little kids had that color so you had all five of your kids with their various things and the next year when Rand and I were married we didn't have any kids yet but we had our, our Christmas t-shirts on and I thought wow this is a, an amazing woman <laughs> to have all of this organized so well so I knew you were you were something special, well, and you truly are. I was an only child, and so uh, and married Ron, who had was one of five boys. So I learned about you know groups uh, then, and of course, my mother always so was so worried because I was an only child. You know that she wanted to make sure that I was well rounded, and she would. I had tap dancing lessons and et cetera, until I got good enough that I could be a teacher's assistant. So I t tap and ballet and twirling a baton in Michigan when he was in uh, residency. Uh, the next door neighbor had a brownie troop and I said, I had done Girl Scouting and loved it with all my kids and all. So I went over and helped her some with uh, uh, the Girl Scouting. And so she said, you know, you could, you could teach these kids to dance. Uh, uh, why don't we have, help, let's do a little dance studio. So in the basement of this home that we were renting while Rand was in residency, I had a studio and taught tap, ballet, and twirling. Oh my goodness. And I used uh, one of the clothes posts that you, uh, when you hung your clothes out, you had posts that held the sheets and yeah. things up. So I 
I put it on the wall and made a ballet bar out of that and the floor was just tile so we did the tap dancing on that floor and that was when we were in Michigan and uh, so uh, I taught probably uh, a year before Rand was born okay. I can gather which kid you know was in on the dance studio but we've done a lot of things and we've made it so and we worked yes. hard and we loved every minute of it I mean it's been yeah. uh, it's been a wonderful life I feel like Ron has given so much to his country, um, just really uh, in all the things he's done. Yes, but you know, you are the support. You are the <laughs> you are the person that has well, made life so joyful and so incredible that he could do that. And I and, try. Yeah. And you know, I well, let's just close with one fun memory that I have that you told me about, and another political wife when uh, former First Lady Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan came to campaign for Ron, what she yeah, told they, you. They did. Uh, as they were leaving, uh, Nancy Reagan uh, gave me a hug and said, oh, I hope our Ronnies win. <laughs> I just think that's so endearing and yeah. sweet. Well, she was so cute. She was really a lovely lady. Wow. Very, very sweet. Well, so are you, and I just want to, <laughs> well, this we Christmas, thank you for all the joyful holidays oh. and all the, the moments well, that you have created. Well, uh, we're so lucky, and we have such talented kids, all of them. Wow. And I can't, can't mention all of them because there's too many no. of them, but they're all <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, I love you, and thanks so much oh, for doing this great. today. And I'd just like to say Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and thanks for watching.